Can you believe I was planning on releasing a video on how good Liverpool have been this season before this match? <laughs> Thank God I didn't. It would have been a disaster. Really, really glad I've never done something like that before. Liverpool and Tottenham Hotspur played out to a dramatic fixture this past weekend. And if we're all being completely honest, this game had no right to be as sensational as it ended up being. Red cards, plural, disallowed goals, sleepy time, it had it all. The match itself was worth talking about, which is what we're going to get into, but the overarching implications of what we saw here, namely officiating in the Premier League, is worth getting into as well. Yo, what's going on guys? Hope you're all doing well. I'm Tinashe. Welcome back to the channel. Not in the regular setup right now, but we move anyway. If you're a Liverpool fan, Saturday was tough. But at the same time, there's a lot to be happy about. Premier League juggernauts Luton picked up their first ever win against Everton. Manchester City picked up their first loss against Wolves. And I know a lot of you guys have been asking me and are expecting me to talk about Man United's result against Palace, but here's the thing. We we don't do that here. In the aftermath of Spurs Liverpool, pretty much the only thing that's been coming out is negativity. We're talking about this match for all the wrong reasons, which is a shame considering how the game started. For the first 20 minutes or so, the game was serious business, end to end stuff. It was really setting up to be a spectacle for everyone, whether you supported either team or were just a neutral. Liverpool were implementing their vintage press, that midfield finally has the energy and desire that they've been lacking for the past. 12 13 months. Poro and Udogi were inverting and pushing forward to good effect for Spurs. Both teams were pressing each other as soon as the gates opened, meaning that this really should have been a more exciting game than it was all the way through. Everybody knows that in most cases, if you're even talking about a referee after a match, chances are they haven't had the best performance. This is one of those cases. Nine yellow cards and two red cards. It was a busy day for referee Simon Hooper. The first significant call was aimed at Curtis Jones, a straight red after this challenge. Fair enough. I don't think anyone really believes this was an intentionally malicious challenge, but we've seen these given. We've seen them not given. It is what it is. Now, we really do have to give Liverpool some flowers. Despite going down to 10 men, they remained a very dangerous force. It's too bad Lady Luck wasn't on their side though. First came the disallowed goal, a Luis Diaz strike that was deemed to be illegal. Guys, this is offsides. What's that? You want to know how I know that without drawing any lines? Bro, trust me. I know what I'm talking about. But since you're so pressed, here you go. Happy? I imagine that was the conversation that took place in the VAR room. No, that was a joke. But the apparent actual conversation that took place paints the officials in a much more negative way incompetence light. It's been said that the reason that this error was made came down to a laughable failure to communicate. The goal was initially ruled out by the on-field refs. The only thing that was left was for this decision to be checked by VAR. For some reason, the video assistant referee thought that the goal was awarded by the on-field ref. Diaz was on side as his eyes, like all of ours. So he simply relayed that he was in agreement with what he thought the initial decision was, stating that the check was complete. Here's the thing, this is a crazy blunder and as much as we all don't want to admit it, we're all human, alright? We all make mistakes. Plus, the officials were stood down from duty for the rest of the weekend. Small error. Let's all move on. No, 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 I'm kidding. This is, this is ridiculous. The Premier League is a multi-billion pound business. How are mistakes like this being allowed to happen? To happen in high-profile showcase matches too. This match, Spurs vs Liverpool, is, is pretty much the sort of match that you'd expect to be an advert for the Premier League. Two high-flying, highly attacking teams going at it. Ruined. Why are millions of people screaming at their TV more efficient than those at the top of the global football pyramid? I get that refereeing these matches is an extremely high pressure job and you know the stakes involved are a lot higher than you and I can imagine, but isn't that what VAR is supposed to be used for? Alleviating the stress? It's wild that it took them less than 30 seconds to come up with a conclusion for the decision when we've seen them take several minutes for clear penalty decisions and such. The Professional Game Match Officials Limited realized their error and released an apology for this, stating that a significant human error had been made. It's their second official apology in as many months since the start of the season. Their 14th 
since the start of last season. It's becoming a bit of a habit. A crazy mistake is made just for the powers that be to turn around and say, You got me. <laughs> Apologies and admitting to wrongdoings is, is admirable. Nobody can deny that. But it doesn't really change the facts, and this list barely scratches the surface of the mistakes that have been made. Spurs went on to score a great first goal. Madison with the sort of ball that we expect from him now. Son with the finish, Cody Gakpo equalizes but dies in the process, meeting Diogo Jota comes on after half time. He gets two yellow cards with the first one being questionable and the second one being empty headed. And then after that the match is pretty much over from a spectacle perspective. Klopp makes four tactical defensive substitutions after minute 70 and it becomes a game of park the bus. A game that Liverpool did pretty well to stay in too. It really sucks that it took a 96th minute own goal to break them. Can't blame Joel Matip here. Liverpool were heavily out of favour to begin with. Tough. Spurs played pretty well in this match too, but I do think they should be disappointed that they didn't do better than maybe they should have against 9 men. To be fair, this was no ordinary batch of 9 men. They were very well drilled, they were organized, they were committed. The good times keep rolling in for Tottenham. Believe it or not, they're on the same number of points right now that they were on at this point last season. So make of that what you will. But the major difference here is that they've already played Man United, Arsenal and Spurs and taken 7 points from those 3 fixtures. They're in a good space. So far, Ange knows what he's doing. This was a really unfortunate result for Liverpool, but what can you do? What I said in the intro is true, I have been writing a video on this team over the past couple of days and I was probably going to release it the day after this game, but I, I didn't because... because... reasons. In other news, Liverpool will have Brighton next week. In all seriousness, they've been doing pretty well so far and I don't expect that to change. But going back to officiating, this is a topic that probably deserves its own detailed overview. When it comes to things like offsides, this is a ruling that to me, should probably be one of the easiest and most basic rulings to enforce in all of football. This time, the problem stemmed from human error. But what's the excuse going to be next time? The ultimate success of any system comes down to two things. Number one, the system itself. And number two, the users of said system. Now, if the users of said system are, let's say, just for example, officiating matches in the United Arab Emirates 48 hours before the Liverpool Spurs match and potentially suffering from a case of jet lag and loose morals, how efficient can the system be? You tell me. As you can see, this is about more than just the offside rule. It's about more than just accountability. These guys are willing to take the blame. It's about the right decision being made when it matters and ensuring that that is always the case. Obviously a somewhat extreme example, but what happens if Liverpool comes second in the Premier League and lose based on goal difference, when they probably should have gotten a point from this match? Will any of you Liverpool fans accept an apology? I doubt it. I, I really doubt it. This was a bad day. But hey, look on the bright side. It could be worse. You could be this guy. If you are this guy, condolences. And there we have it. Let me know what you guys thought about this Liverpool Spurs match and this crazy refereeing debacle. Feel free to follow my Twitter, uh, the link's in the description. That's all for me today. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you're having a great day. Cheers and I will catch you in the next one.